Do you remember back in school when they said that the stone blocks cut by the ancient Egyptians were so precise that you couldn't fit a razor blade or even a human hair in between them? Well, this is what they meant. Look at that. The precision cut of these massive and extremely hard granite blocks is so unbelievably exact that it's difficult to even differentiate the two stones together. The high definition camera itself, despite all its megapixels, struggles to pick up this line. It's something that can only be truly appreciated when viewed in person with the naked eye. And if you think this is impressive, wait until you see the photos from other parts of ancient Egypt that I'm going to show you later in this video. But what you're seeing here are the enormous polygonal stone blocks that make up the Valley Temple, which is located in front of the Great Sphinx in Giza, Egypt. This is one of those sites that most people are unaware of as the Great Sphinx and the pyramids get all the attention, but it is without a doubt one of the most spectacular sites found from ancient Egypt. Many of these rose granite blocks are well over 30 tons apiece. However, the immense difficulty to construct a temple made out of polygonal shaped granite pieced together as if a tight fitted puzzle is next level difficulty made to last millennia and survive even the strongest of earthquakes. And when I said that these stones are massive, you have to compare them to people to truly appreciate their size. And that's me there. I'm five foot 10 or 178 centimeters. Even with this photo, you can't truly appreciate it as this was shot with an ultra wide camera lens, which distorts the true size and the bulk of these blocks, particularly their widths. It does not do it justice for what your eyes witness here in person. And, and by the way, this particular block is closer to 50 tons in weight and brought from more than 500 miles away, which the experts theorized must have been carried by boat down the Nile River. However, the bizarre reality is that even the largest known ancient Egyptian boat ever found couldn't possibly sustain even a fraction of the weight of these stones. Make no mistake, the mystery is real, hence why there is a surging interest by millions of people from around the world into our lost ancient past. But that aside, and going back to the unbelievable precision that makes up these stones, notice that from a distance you can't possibly appreciate just how tightly cut and formed together they are. You see, many of these blocks are cut with rounded edges, thus creating a seam or groove of sorts between the blocks. But when you get up close, you can see that in the middle of these seams is a cut so perfect that they are completely flushed together as if they were laser cut. In fact, they almost look fused together. And you'll find awesome examples all throughout this magnificent structure. Take this example here. From a bit of a distance, you wouldn't realize just how exact the cut is, again, due to the breadth of the seams. Virtually all the blocks that make up this astounding stone complex are like this. It's simply fascinating. From a distance, you wouldn't think much of the methods used to cut these stones, but it's not until you get up close that you can appreciate the level of accuracy. It truly is next level. But you should know that this is not some one-off fluke example, as there are countless others found throughout the land of ancient Egypt. Even the ground itself has been lined with such unbelievably precise stone blocks that without careful inspection, you might not notice at all. And like I just said, Stone cuts that are so fine that it's difficult for even cameras to pick up on. Just compare this line cut to a hotel room key, which is of course the size of a credit card. The exactness of these two blocks that are pieced together makes the width of that card look thick in comparison. Because again, notice how you can hardly see that line from even just a few feet above it. And you'll be curious to know that this example here is only a few steps away from the Great Pyramid of Giza. In fact, it's right next to it. You see, something that most people are not aware of is that the entire ground surrounding the pyramids are covered in flooring stones, and there are thousands of them, many of which are polygonal in shape, cut and pieced together perfectly, again, as if a puzzle. You see, it becomes even more interesting when you realize that these stones have been there for at least 4,500 years beneath the blaring sun and elements of erosion, including wind, rain, weather, and of course, millions of humans that have walked on, stumbled, and further deteriorated these blocks in the thousands of years since. And examples of polygonal flooring stones can be found at various temples throughout Egypt, even in the most unlikely places such as the roof of the Temple of Hathor in Dendera. 
hundreds of polygonal stones which, although weathered and eroded, upon a closer inspection you can see just how precise these stone cuts are. But getting back to the even more impressive stuff, wait until you see this. The so-called Bent Pyramid of Egypt is a place that very, very few people have seen with their own eyes as it's been closed to the public and even archaeologists for several decades. Even the most notable researchers have been denied access to enter inside this pyramid. That is until it finally opened in the summer of 2019 and I had the great timing and privilege to be among the very first tourists to enter this utterly bizarre structure in December of 2020 and I filmed the entire thing and if you're interested in seeing the incredibly bizarre interior structure and layout of this pyramid you'll want to check out my video tour of it after this video but when you enter inside and traverse the tunnels of cut limestone that makes up the structure you see precision cuts the likes of which are nothing short of astounding look at that like I mentioned earlier many of these cuts are so exact that it's difficult for the camera to differentiate the blocks together even notice this example of three stone blocks joined. Ignore the damage and imperfect exterior portions of the stone block which naturally catch your eye and focus on the line cuts themselves. Whoever built this clearly chose to make the fitting of the blocks to a level of perfection while focusing less on the exterior portion of blocks that make up the pyramid tunnels. And you'll notice that this is the case from floor to ceiling throughout this pyramid and these blocks are by no means small yet cut so perfectly that they align so tightly that not even a razor or human hair could fit in between them. I'd even venture to say that they're probably watertight as well, and do not be fooled by their soft, chalk-like appearance. You could push your fingernail into this stone as hard as you possibly could and it wouldn't even scratch it. As the saying goes, they are as hard as a rock. In examples like this, where we see the intersection of three stone blocks connecting at such a fine degree of accuracy, provides us with a wonderful perspective that illustrates just how remarkable the capabilities were for the people that made this. But that's the thing, and this is where things start to get really weird. So before I show you more astonishing photos, there's something you need to know, and most people are completely surprised and what I'm going to share next because it shows just how truly mysterious the ancient Egyptians are. You see these bronze chisels here, and just so you know, bronze is a combination of copper and tin, but you see these other various bronze tools here as well, including small handheld saws, and here are a few more examples of various Egyptian tooling, all of which are on display in the Cairo Museum in Egypt. I took these photos myself. All of these tools you're seeing are literally the only examples of the types of known tools utilized by the ancient Egyptians that have ever been found. Just to clarify, these are not the only number of chisels or saws ever found, but they are the only types of tooling ever found to exist from the ancient Egyptians. That's right, and here's something else you need to know, is that out of the hundreds of thousands of hieroglyphics found throughout the land of ancient Egypt, not one single one of them shows anything about how the Egyptians cut or carved stone or constructed the pyramids. Literally zero whatsoever, and that's a verifiable fact by the way. It's just that most people are completely surprised when they hear that for the first time. You see, what happened is we were shown animations like these as children in school, not realizing that this is nothing more than some theorized drawing created only recently for school textbooks. A bunch of primitive dudes wearing nothing but loincloths using soft bronze chisels to shape the stones that make up the pyramids of Egypt. But here is the reality of what happened when people actually tested these primitive alleged methods in modern times. After days of work, their copper chisels and stone pounders are barely making a dent. Brown is wearing down tools at an extraordinary rate. The copper chisel the ancient Egyptians would have used lasts only a few dozen strikes. That was a notable Egyptologist testing stone hammers and bronze chisels on limestone in an attempt to recreate the Sphinx's nose. And you heard what they said. After a few days of work and they barely made a dent, and the chisels themselves, after just a few dozen strikes, were worn out and useless. So clearly not a feasible explanation. And what you didn't see is that later in this documentary, they completely gave up and resorted to using power saws to finish the task. But that was bronze chisels on limestone.
Wait until you see what happened when he tried it on granite. When Roger tries chisels made from bronze, the results are disappointing. As you can see, we're just we're leaving a lot of metal and very little stone is flaking off. Yeah, so no. Obviously, bronze chisels were not the methods of tools utilized by the Egyptians or, or anyone to cut and carve stone of any kind. Which is why it is so bizarre to see that this is still a primary explanation that is taught today. They even have it posted as descriptions within museums. And the reason for this is because the people writing ancient history books in modern times have concluded that these must be the types of tools that were used since they are the only types of tools that have ever been found, so case closed, mystery solved. But they proclaim that without ever having tested these primitive, alleged methods themselves. And bronze chisels aside, the more commonly accepted explanation for cutting the granite and limestone blocks involves copper saws. But again, these are the only examples of saws ever found from the ancient Egyptians, and not only that, the only depictions of the Egyptians using saws of any kind are these right here, which clearly shows them using small saws to cut wood for constructing furniture. So watch what happens with that same Egyptologist, Mark Lehner, used a copper saw to demonstrate how it could have been used to cut granite blocks. All right, we have a big block of granite here. So how's this copper going to cut this granite? Even with teeth, the copper alone is too soft. We're going to put sand inside the groove and we're going to put this saw on top of the sand and then let the sand do the cutting. Now Dennis, will we see any progress in our lifetime? Yes, um, if you came back in an hour's time you would see about a four millimeter cut down into the stone. You're kidding, in an hour you'll be four millimeters down? Well, I've been doing a lot of experiments and I can guarantee that this will cut through the stone at about four millimeters an hour. The sawing went wonderful once we switched over to using uh, water with the sand. As you can see here, we achieved this in just a few days. Four millimeters an hour and just a few inches over a few days? Are you kidding me? So besides the fact that no saw of this size was ever found, nor was there any saw of this size ever found to be depicted by the Egyptians, but we can clearly see that this method is so unbelievably so slow that it couldn't possibly be a feasible explanation for how the Egyptians cut and carved the millions of stones that make up the pyramids. Because keep in mind that the Great Pyramid of Giza is made of some 2.3 million stone blocks and was said to be constructed over approximately 20 years. That means that they would have had to cut, carve, move in place at least one stone block every few minutes to achieve that timeline. And this does not include the many millions of more stone blocks that make up more than a hundred other known pyramids found throughout Egypt. Many people are not aware of just how many Egyptian pyramids there are, and all of which were said to be done within a very specific timeline for their respective pharaoh, at least according to the alleged story that we've been taught in modern times. And I wonder just how many millions of blocks would make up that 118 pyramids, because of course they're all of differing sizes and dimensions. And this does not include the many millions of stone blocks that make up the dozens of various temples found throughout Egypt. This is just a few examples, all of which were made from countless stacked blocks. Nor does it include the countless flooring stones that surround these temples and the pyramids of Giza itself. Nor does it include the hundreds of various structures, including mastabas, all of which are made of stone blocks nor does it include the countless stones that make up the many columns found at dozens of sites throughout Egypt, nor does it include the many gigantic stone obelisks, giant stone boxes, as well as the countless stone sarcophagi found all over the place, far more than could possibly be shared in this video, and nor does it include the thousands of incredible stone statues that have been found throughout the land of ancient Egypt. And it sure doesn't include all of the other random, incredibly shaped granite stones that were once part of structures that are long since gone. Impeccably curved granite that couldn't possibly be done with the known tooling found in Egypt, is, at least as far as what you've just seen. And you don't have to be a stonemason, archaeologist, or even a frickin' rockin' scientist to comprehend that these tools here, 
copper saws and chisels, did not create the cuts of this level of precision. And this certainly does not even address the size of these stones and the time it would take to do it, which is of course a major factor that must be considered. But there's even more proof that these blocks were not cut with two guys holding on to some handheld saw. This granite sarcophagus is one of many that are on display in the Cairo Museum in Egypt. However, what makes this particular stone box so unique is that it's listed as being discarded by the Egyptians, as on the other side you see that they made a mistake in the cut and it went off center. But this in itself is evidence that the Egyptians were not using some unbelievably slow, primitive handheld saw because if that was the case, they would have noticed and corrected their mistake almost immediately. The fact that it continued off center for nearly another three feet strongly indicates that they were using a method that was far quicker and superior. The evidence is right in front of us. Like I always say, look and think for yourself. There are far too many details that weren't shown to us when we learned about the Egyptians as kids. But when you revisit this amazing topic as an adult with more life experience and the ability to use discernment, you can see just how real the mystery is. Yet despite all the details I shared in this video, many will still adamantly defend these debunked narratives. But you have to keep in mind that many of these people that propose these alleged methods have never actually been to Egypt themselves, and nor have they physically tried to cut a stone block with these primitive methods either. And those who have attempted it have given up. They've never finished one single block. They do it for a little bit and realize like, oh wow, this is extremely difficult and just stop right there. I mean, isn't that interesting? Because between all the stone cut blocks that make up the hundreds of pyramids, temples, various stone structures, flooring stones, columns, obelisks, statues, stone boxes and sarcophagi and everything else, I wouldn't be surprised if the Egyptians cut at least 50 million stone blocks. Maybe even closer to 100 million, perhaps. I mean, who knows? Yet you will not find one single example in modern times of a fully cut stone block that was done with these primitive methods. Isn't that interesting? You have the Egyptians with tens of millions of stone blocks, maybe even 100 million. I'm just throwing out a number here, but tens of millions, no doubt. And yet we haven't done one in modern times. It's clear that the ancient Egyptians had some sort of lost technology, and by technology, we shouldn't just think computers and lasers and anything else in our mind. T technology itself can be something quite simple. I mean, even a saddle on a horse is considered a technology. We have to think out the box, outside the box, and it doesn't have to involve aliens, because that's usually what people say when they argue against these, these methods. Say, oh, so let me guess, you think it was aliens, right? It's like, What's that about? Like, I'm not suggesting aliens, and very few people that are discussing these methods have said aliens. It's just that you need to look at this with open eyes and see that the mystery is here. When you see this stuff as an adult, you can see just how real the mystery is. But I'm going to wrap it up here. My next video will be out very, very soon. And if you want to see more amazing vo uh, pictures of these stones, go to my Instagram. I'll leave a link down in the description. And I'll leave a, a link for my TikTok. I created an account, I haven't put a video up yet, but I have to now branch out in order to bring more people to this channel. And I, I didn't want to get on TikTok, but now I realize that that, is, that platform is just too big and it's not going away. So if you're interested, go on there because I'm going to be making a whole bunch of videos in a short period of time to launch that thing. But anyways, I'll leave it at that. My name's Jimmy, my channel's called Bright Insight. Take care, everybody.